in the face of all of this, don't forget, it's not like we are saying don't do surrogacy and just don't do anything. There are options. There are options. So there is also the deep conflict, you know, about giving up a baby at birth. A good percentage of women, I'm talking of the surrogates, will, after bonding with this child for nine months, not want to give up the child. So there's always that problem of, okay, what, what do we now do? We had an agreement, which is in itself insulting in a manner of putting it. So you, you cannot bond with a child for nine months, even if it was not your egg or your, or your sperm, or it was not you, the embryo was inserted into you. But the point is, you cannot bond with somebody that, you know, seriously for nine months and just be ready to just break it up like that. It does something to the psyche of both mother, the surrogate mother, and then even the child. There are many other issues that have come up. For instance, maybe it might not be very common in this part of the world, but there are those who agreed that, okay, I want to have a child. And then the embryo was inserted and then they had triplets. So there's a verbal agreement of one child. In, in this part of the world, you can say, oh, triple blessing. But I'm telling you, that's not the same thing every, everywhere. So some people will say, okay, fine. Are we going to subscribe to something called selective abortion? Which means, since it is just one, I bargained four. Now you're bringing three. I did not bargain for three. So kill two and give me one. How about issues of, you know, the, 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 the babies, when eventually they are born, coming out with some kind of, you know, uh, um, illnesses or sicknesses, some, something genetic, Down syndrome, anything of that nature. Again, there was an agreement, and the agreement did not state that should there be any malfunctioning of the system, they would accept that. It opens up a whole lot of discussions. And then, can we also consider the point of, what if during the process, during the nine months now of the gestation, the couple, the couple who actually have the embryo, imagine they are homologous, get a divorce? What, what, what happens? Who takes the baby? Like I said, this may not be the story as it is in this country, but I don't think it is fair to the innocent child to commercialize, to make the origin of a child just a verbal agreement and a financial transaction. So it is insulting to the dignity of origin, not to talk of the split origins of it. So you have the gestating mother, you have the mother who produced the egg, the man who brought the sperm. So more or less you can sometimes have three, four, in quotes, parents, just one child. That is psychologically damaging in the long run. So, options are there. You, I, I'm not sure we are ready for this discussion yet in this country, but adoption is a viable option. And should there be a problem of infertility? We have said a lot of things about that in the previous videos. Infertility is a symptom of another problem. What most people don't do is try to solve that problem. Rather, they bypass it. And there are advancements in medical technology that actually help to be more precise with how to go about the problems of infertility. I'm not trying to have a messianic complex here. I'm not trying to say all cases can be solved. No, no. Let's be very realistic and let's be honest with ourselves. But at least can we be open to the possibility of it and try and see whether or not this is actually God's plan. Don't forget, and I leave you with this, no one has a right to have a child. That sounds very harsh i know but a child is a gift and in the nature of gifts you don't force the giver you simply accept so surrogacy it's a no-no because of the many reasons that have been talked about and i know many more will be said about this when you ask your questions but for now give it a thought and then catch you in the next session thank you